Kubla Khan is divided into two sections. The first, that is line 1 to line 36, dealing with the creation of poetry through rational craftsmanship. And the second, that is line 37 to line 54, with inspiration and irrationality. Each section presents a problem that reveals the inadequacy of the prevailing theories of poetic composition and the falsity of their poet figures. Thus, the poem as a whole demonstrates a dilemma and suggests a need for a new theory of poetic creation. While Coleridge does not provide this new theory or a figure of a true poet, he does contribute to the development of new ideas and symbols by highlighting the pitfalls of previous theories. Essentially, the poem shows Coleridge evaluating traditional ideas of poetic creation and finding them lacking, leaving room for a new approach to emerge. A closer examination of the poem supports this interpretation. According to an article by George Watson in a review of English literature, the first 36 lines of the poem can be seen as a representative of neoclassical or Augustan poetry, which is characterized by specific rules and regulations. Kubla Khan portrayed as a neoclassical poet, creates his work through a process of decree and refinement through system and measure. The use of an architectural metaphor reduces the poem to a mere object that is put together according to a specific plan. However, Kubla Khan's plan fails to account for certain aspects of the natural environment, such as the chasm and the river, which violate the enclosure. These discrepancies reveal the limitations of the neoclassical approach and set the stage for the contrasting romantic vision that follows in the second half of the poem. Kubla Khan's attempt to impose rational order on the creation of his pleasure dome fails to account for the untamable aspects of nature, such as the river and the chasm, which undermine his prescribed system. This results in an illusion of stability that is ultimately threatened by the very elements it seeks to exclude. The first section concludes by hinting at the destruction of Kubla Khan's world through the ominous prophecy of war and the image of the pleasure dome's shadow reflected on waves. This suggests that neoclassicism is an incomplete and unstable approach to poetry that must be supplemented with a recognition of the unpredictable and irrational aspects of nature. The poet must incorporate all elements of the organic order to create a truly comprehensive and enduring work of art. The flawed neoclassical view of poetic creation is contrasted with another flawed view in the last 18 lines of Kubla Khan, the ancient fury of the poet. This figure, described with flashing eyes and floating hair, represents the enthusiastic poet that Plato condemned. In this view, the poet's mind and judgment have been overtaken by a spirit, and the poet becomes a passive instrument for its expression. The poem of this flawed poet is non-existent and should remain so, as it stems from a private esoteric fantasy and not a genuine connection to nature. His attempts at poetic creation are unsuccessful, causing him to resort to the affected postures of an irritable genius, finding pleasure in mystifying others rather than sharing his insights with them as a true poet would. Instead of embracing the opportunity to communicate, he delights in the prospect of causing others to beware, beware. The spirit may express itself in an intelligible or unintelligible way, and the poet cannot recall the experience enough to write about it. Watson notes this comparison, but he mistakenly suggests that this is a view of the poet preferred by Coleridge, whereas Kubla Khan portrays this figure as unreliable. The poem suggests that the poet must strike a balance between rationality and inspiration rather than favoring one over the other.